That's actually my theme song. My wife has to play that when I come home at night. The kids dance around me like little aliens. Abba, Abba. I actually hate that song. The film was nominated for an Academy Award, but it didn't win. It got beat by Shrek. So I went to work on Shrek 2 thinking now nah, we'll get it, and we got beat by The Incredibles. Screw The Incredibles. So, um, good afternoon, Jew Orleans. <laughs> Great to be here. What a perfect place to celebrate Purim, the home of the original Mardi Gras, right? Purim is the original Mardi Gras. We know that the Persians got together and the women flipped up their tops. Actually, no, the, that did not happen. The religious men flipped up their tops, right? I mean, after all, a yarmulke is just a, a bra, you know, cut in half, chin straps in your business, right? Two, two yarmulkes for every bra. The Jews have always been economical. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I often get asked if I put anything Jewish in my writing. And the truth is, I do. Being a Jew has made me a much, a much better writer. I, you have to steal from the best. So I steal from God. I steal from Moses. I steal from actually anyone I can. Um, a couple of quick examples, the Rugrats Hanukkah special. Probably my favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Probably my favorite uh, stealing from something Jewish to put in. The, the, uh, the uh, Nickelodeon originally wanted to do just a regular uh, New Year's special. And I was like, New Year's? What's that? We're gonna bang some pots and pans. Babies banging pots and pans. I don't know, Chucky. That's probably not a good idea. Um, you don't know where that pot's been. So, so I said, how about Hanukkah? And they said, well, let's do, we could do Chrismica. And I said, no, you guys already have a Christmas special. Let's just do straight Hanukkah. And the, and the, the head of the studio said, no, no, we, I want to do Chrismica. And then she said, no, no, I want to do New Year's. And then, thank God, the president of Nickelodeon was Jewish. And he said, hey, what about Hanukkah? <laughs> yes. But what made that show especially important to me was it was the first thing that I got made after a long journey not being Jewish. I was born Jewish, but I was, I was, and I was raised Reform. And, but when I was growing up, I'm a little older than you guys. I mean, the Tribe Fest age thing is kind of funny. It's, what, 22 to 45. You turn 46 and it's like Logan's run. They cut you off from the 22-year-olds. <laughs> they might as well kill you, right? Put you in a little whirly gig and poof, he's gone. That dreaded 46th birthday. <laughs> what was my point? I forgot. Oh, so I, I had, um, or they also they told me not to walk too much because it's hard for the camera. So I'm going to move around in a safe way. Is that better? Okay. So, actually, I was raised in a reformed community, but ages ago, I'm past the cutoff. I shouldn't be here, technically. And uh, the reformed community that I grew up in, in a little town called Ventura, California, was very sleepy. <laughs> Great town. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Um, please shut off those cell phones. Uh, so... So in Ventura, when I was growing up, it was a much smaller town, much sleepier. There wasn't a lot of Jewish life. There were seven Jewish kids in my high school of about 2,600 people, and none of them were religious. And so we very quickly assimilated. That's what we did. And um, I, uh, I, I, all my friends were Christians. And uh, I, growing up, I had a little fear of, of, of what came after life. I was nervous about the whole thing. There were a couple tragedies in our community when I was young. And then my, uh, my parents were going through a rocky time, and they ended up getting divorced, and that kind of throws off your confidence a little. And we had the Cold War. They were aiming missiles. Russia, we're back to it all, by the way. It, it all comes full circle. And the, the, the Russians were aiming all these missiles, and I understood that they were at my, at my house. So I was very nervous. And we had the duck and cover. You'd stick your head under the desk, and your butt would be up here like this. And God willing, you know, the missile would land you know, over here, but your head would be okay because the formica on those desks was just amazing. So that made me feel better. And they were showing us Holocaust movies. Did you guys ever watch the Holocaust films? Like, I was like, eight! Like, what are you showing us this for? So I was traumatized, and I was looking for meaning. And when I was growing up in the Reform Synagogue, we talked about the paintings of Chagall, the Holocaust, and planting trees in Israel. They gave us those little cardboard. That was the holy trinity of my childhood. <laughs> And we had those little cardboard, you put the quarters in the cardboard holder things, and I don't know how many millions of trees they killed to print those cardboard <laughs> holders, right? 
But I was a nervous kid. I was very anxious. And, and all my friends were going to church, so I went to church. And by the time I was 18, I became a Christian. And I was a very excited, born-again Christian. I was doing, uh, but I loved putting on a show. I always was the guy that was putting on a show. It made me feel better. How many did I need in my audience? 10, we got 1,500. Way to go, guys. And that Pew report said that the Jews are having trouble. Not here. I say, I say, screw the Pew. That's my, that's my motto. Um, the Jews have never looked at surveys. I mean, we've been dead for, oh, we're going to die. It's every, it's, oh, we're dead. It's like Mark Twain, greatly exaggerating our death. We're going to be around, folks. We have to work hard to make sure our friends are going to come with us on the journey, but we're going to be around. So um, thank you very much. So, so uh, I had become this Christian, and um, it, it gave me a sense of meaning because there was an afterlife. I didn't know the Jews had invented the afterlife, Right. So I went off to work in Hollywood because I, to put on a show made me feel alive, so I kept putting on shows, and um, I could find, a, if I could find 1,500 people, that was great. If there was eight, if there was, tw how many people do you have to have to put on a show? One. You need one person to connect with. If you can just lock eyes and make contact with one person in your life and connect, you start to feel like you matter. And most of us spend much of our lives looking for that one special person to connect with, and then we spend the rest of our lives driving that person out of their mind. But, but for me, it was coming into the church, and they welcomed me, and it was nice, and they all sang together. They sang, they started the song and ended at the same time. And as a Jew, I'd never heard that. Um, and the places were organized and clean and, and fancy. And but anyway, what happened was uh, I went to Ireland to work on my first film, which was All Dogs Go to Heaven. And which, again, there's... Thank you, thank you. I didn't, know, I didn't know at the time that heaven was a Jewish concept, but there you go. And while I was there, I met this young guy who was... He was, he was wearing one of these funny hats, and he was orthodox. And I had never met an orthodox person before because I had been told about them in Ventura. They were these freaky, scary people who, who threw rocks at cars on Saturday. And, and uh, not good throws either. These were like little girly Jewish throws, and then they ran away. <laughs> so, and he stayed away from me for the first year because he thought I was, one of those, I was one of those Jews for Jesus because I was a Christian. And I'm like, no, I'm not one of those guys. I, those guys freak me out. It's like... It makes as much sense as lesbians for Chippendales. Like, what are they, where are they going with this, you know? It's vegetarians for Burger King. I mean, it's nuts. But he and I started a dialogue. We started a dialogue together, and he started to teach me stuff about his faith. And he had had a solid Jewish education. And the more he talked, the more my Christianity stopped making sense. And I started to get depressed, because when you hear about something really beautiful, but it's too far away. I couldn't be like him. He was a freak. I loved lobster. I loved driving on Saturdays. Saturday's the best day to drive. It's like, it's the best day. Like, it would be easier to buy a bicycle on the writings of Chairman Mao and put on a robe and become a Chinese man than it would be to, to be like this guy, right? It's crazy. So what happened was I came back to the U.S. I, I, I moved further back in church, and this beautiful, tall, blonde, leggy girl came in, and I asked her out, and, and she said yes. So we started dating. But at the same time, I met this guy, Michael Medved, who was a film critic guy. And he invited me to his house for Shabbos. And that's how we said it. Shabbos. He spit all over me. It's like the day of rest on which your lips go to sleep. So I go there, and it's all these beautiful children having so much fun, and their eyes are lit up, and they're not nervous about why they're here on the planet. They just were in love with their Judaism. And, and, I th and their parents, there was a Yiddish thing. They said the parents were, sh they were shepping naches. And I thought they said they were schlepping nachos. And I love nachos. So I'm like, let's do this. So I start bringing my date to the to this shul, and she comes and she loves it. And we keep coming back, and they start teaching us stuff. And we start learning all this wonderful Jewish stuff. And slowly over time, we actually decided to go down this path to come back to being Jewish. The people in the church were very disappointed in us. We were First, we were married in the church with a big cross and a hoopah and a Jews for Jesus rabbi because no one else would do it. But later, we switched off, and we started going to church on, on, on Sunday and synagogue on Saturday. But we got too tired, because when do you go to Costco, really? <laughs> so, so we're here, we're Jews, and we're proud, and we really love it. And it's great to be back. Thank you. Let me share with you. So you can Google my movie credits. There's a bunch of them. 
Uh, Rugrats, Rugrats in Paris, All Dogs, uh, Jimmy Neutron, uh, Are We There Yet, Anastasia, um, uh, the Smurfs movies one and two. But in each of these movies, I try and hide some little Jewish thing. Smurfs one, there are 613 shades of blue. Go look for that. And more importantly in Smurfs two, there's the little lesson that you can change your destiny, which comes from what we learned at this little shul about, um, about uh, Shalom Aleichem, that these two angels come to your house. And one is a bad angel and one is a good angel. And if your house is all ready for Shabbos and there's peace in the home and the children are ready for Shabbos and the family's together, then the, the bad angel has to say, or the good angel gets to say, may it be like this next week, and the bad angel has to say, amen. But if it's a mess and nobody's lighting candles and there's no peace in the home and Judaism is on the wane, then the bad angel gets to say, may it be like this next week, and the good angel has to say, amen. So the rabbis ask this question, how does it ever change? It changes because our father, Avraham, was told that he, his destiny was, we are greater than the stars. His destiny was above the stars. We make our own destiny. And there isn't a day that goes by where you don't get to start over as a Jew. You wake up in the morning and you say, Moda Ani, you renewed my contract. I'm back for another day. No matter how crappy it may be going, you're here for a reason, and that's a Jewish message. I urge you guys to make the most of this tribe fest. You have incredible resources here. Grab onto them. Each day, take one little step. That one person you need in the audience, he's right above you. We brought the one true God. We brought the knowledge of him to the world. Grab onto him, enjoy him, and make the most of yourself one step at a time. Thank you very much. Thank you.